All right. Um, welcome back, guys. Um, welcome, welcome back. If you're listening on the podcast, um, welcome back. If you're uh, watching this on YouTube or on Instagram or TikTok, wherever, welcome back. Uh, so I'm here with um, Rebecca. She's our student. Uh, so we're still doing our one-on-one uh, tutoring. Well, this is part of our live uh, webinar. And as I said in previous episodes, if you uh, listen to those, uh, this is 100% free. Free means zero. So uh, we do live training here for students. Sometimes we have one student. Sometimes we have up to six, seven uh, students at once. So if you want to be um, a part of one of our free trainings, uh, we're going to have the link in the description. So click that link and register. Just remember to confirm your registration. The other thing uh, to let you guys know is we're pre-selling our courses, right? So pre-selling our courses, meaning that you can uh, purchase our self-study courses in advance. So if you do that, you're going to end up saving about 70%. Uh, that's about $116, which is a lot of savings. And then not just that, but we also have our affiliate program. So you can sign up um, to become an affiliate. We're going to have all those links um, um, in the description. Uh, you can sign up to become an affiliate. And as an affiliate, you refer um, our courses to people. And if, you know, if someone makes a, a purchase, it can be any of our courses, one-on-one -on -one training, self-study, you get 30% of the purchase price. Uh, so that's another way to make some extra money on the side. Our average affiliates uh, make about um, 725 bucks a month. Not bad, right? So if you're interested in that, uh, find a link in the description. Okay, so uh, let's get back here. Um, hey, if I don't advertise our own product, uh, no. <laughs> I'm not going to advertise another company's products, right? So uh, that was just a little plug for our self-study courses. Don't get mad. It's free, right? So hey, if it's free, we got to you know, put a little plug there. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. If, if, if you are paying for this, I swear, we're not going to even waste you know, two, three minutes trying to um, promote it. <laughs> because this is free, uh, well, you have to uh, be a little patient. Okay, so uh, we have our student, as I said from last time, we have Rebecca. Uh, she's from the great state of Nevada. Uh, so she's joining us here. Uh, Nevada, um, Rebecca, you want to introduce yourself again for those who didn't watch previous episodes? Yes, I'm Rebecca, and I am from beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada, and I'm excited to be taking this course so that I could pass for my insurance. Life and health insurance. All right, guys. Yeah, she's living in adult <laughs> Disneyland. We have That's the right. Disneyland for kids. And then we're right. Gonna <laughs> I got a whole city. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, so we're we're happy to have you, uh, Rebecca. We look okay. forward to helping you pass your insurance exam. So we're still on group life insurance. Um, last one we stopped on was um, um, conversion. Right, it would say that if you have group life insurance, you have the right if you leave that group. You know, the most common group life insurance is um, employee group, where you're an employee for a company. If you leave, you have the right to convert that group life insurance to um, an individual life insurance policy, but it's within a set period of time, and that is 31 days. All right, um, so. Um, <laughs> Just to recap, uh, under what, um, uh, like in what situations or like what requirements have to be met before you can convert the group life insurance to an individual life insurance? Um, what sort of requirements have to be met in order to change from uh, group? Yeah, um, in, in order to convert your group life insurance. So individual life insurance, like what conditions must be met? Um, 
So it's got to be uh, less than what the policy uh, is worth? Uh, no. So in, in order to change the, um, in order to change from group life insurance, uh, no, to convert from group life insurance to um, to an individual life insurance, you must either quit your job, right? Retire. Uh, get terminated, quit, right? Terminated, yeah. quit your job or retirement, if I'm not mistaken. Those are the conditions. Yep. All right. So we're saying that to convert your individual, your group life insurance to an individual life insurance, you have to uh, be separated from that group, right? That means you have to either retire, uh, get fired, or quit, right? But as long as you're with that group, um, then the conversion uh, privilege does not apply to you, right? Into an individual life insurance. Now, there's only one circumstance in which you can be able to convert uh, from, an, from a group life insurance to an individual life insurance while you're still on your job, right? And this is something that a lot of people don't know about. But if, if you've been an employee for at least five years, right? You've been on the job for at least five years and, and your employer decides for whatever reason to, you know, you know, to, to cancel insurance, right? Like, okay, we're not going to, offer life insurance anymore to employees, right? So, so that means they're getting rid of the uh, insurance plan altogether, right? If you've been with your employer for at least five years, then even though you're still with the employer, but because they're getting rid of their insurance, then you have the right to convert to an individual policy. If you've been with the employer for less than five years, then that, you know, that right does not apply, right? You don't get to convert. So the only exception where you can convert your insurance when you're still with your employer to, uh, to an individual life insurance is two things have to be um, um, occur. Number one, you, you have to be with that employer for at least five years. Number two, your employer is getting rid of the insurance. Hey, if I'm still with you and you're getting rid of the insurance and I've been with you for at least five years, I think I should have that right to convert to an individual policy. So that's the only exception. Any questions? No. All right. So, so that's just a little bit for conversion. And the most important thing for group life insurance for conversion is that date. Um, so within how many days does someone, um, you know, can someone convert their group life insurance to individual life insurance after they quit their job or, or leave their job? 31 days? Perfect, 31 days. So if they're going to ask you a question on the conversion uh, for group life insurance, more than likely, um, that will be the question I'll be asked. The other question I will be asked is, um, if you're converting from an individual life insurance policy to a, from a group life insurance to an individual life insurance policy, um, do you have to show evidence of... Um, of insurability, yes or no? Yeah. Perfect, no, right? So as long as you convert within those 31 days, you do not have to show any evidence of insurability. All right, uh, that's that's good. All right, so now we're gonna talk about our next topic here. We're gonna talk about, uh, the, you have two different types of group life insurance. We, we talked about this in the overview. We have non-contributory and contributory group life insurance. So tell me everything you know about, um, you know, or you can compare and contrast the two, you know, the difference between the two. I'm, um, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm putting you on the spot here. I know. Okay, so if I can remember correctly, mm -hmm. non-contributory mm -hmm. means that 100% of the members must be covered or must be under the non-contributory. Contribut mm -hmm. Contributory, then at least 75% of the members must be covered. Perfect. Uh, non-contributory means that the uh, employee or employer pays for 
um, oh God, I think I want to say all of the perfect, uh, all of something, but I can't remember exactly what uh, it was. All of the premium. Premium. It was the premium. That was yeah, all of the premium. Fine. Perfect. And then mm -hmm. contributory. Uh, if I'm not mistaken. Then they pay twenty five percent. Um. Well, the percentage can can vary. Okay. Uh, okay. It doesn't matter. Um. But the most important thing is um. The employer, you no, know, the, the employee has skin in the game, right? So it's is what contributory. Why? Because the employee is contributing. Right. Whereas if it's non-contributory, the employee is not contributing anything. So it's when it you no, know, the name just applies to what the uh, employee is doing. If the employee is paying part of it, the employee is contributing. So it's contributor, right? And if it's contributor, then the insurance company will require the employer um, you know, to have at least 75% um, of the employees covered. If it's non-contributor, then 100% of the eligible employees have to be covered. Why? Because it's free. Just think about it. If something is free, you know, why won't everybody be part of it, right? Right. So that's the difference. So, uh, so if you know those two again, um, you no, know, those are the two main difference. So if they're going to ask you a question on that, um, on that topic, more than likely uh, that's a question that will come up. So let's just do some quick um, practice questions here. Uh, so number one, you can tell me what the answer is. Um, it says a contributor plan has which one of the following features? So what's the answer? D. Uh, D. Um, a D as in dog. Well done. C. Sorry. C. Perfect. Yes. Yeah. C. Eligible employees pay a portion of the premium. That's true. So, contributor just describes, you no, know, it's just uh, describing whether the employee is um, paying premiums or not. That's it, right? It just so it's just about the premium payment. So if the employee is paying towards, you know, paying, it can be the percentage really doesn't matter. It can be 5%, 20%, 50, it doesn't matter. But as long as the employee is paying uh, some of that premium for their group life insurance is considered contributory, right? Because you're contributing. If it's uh, non-contributory, that means the employee is not paying anything, right? They're getting it free. And if you're not paying anything, well, everybody has to be covered. If you're going to pay something, we understand some. You know, we understand some people are cheapskates, right? They'll be like, ah, that's too much money. I don't want to get, uh, you no know, life insurance on my back. That's fine. So the, the insurance company say, okay, um, because we understand some people will not want to pay uh, premiums or you no, know, they don't want to be a part of it because they got to pay money, uh, take money out of their paycheck. That's fine. But now we're going to, instead of requiring every employee who's eligible to um, to be a part, now we require only 75% of eligible employees uh, for you to, to cover them. Understood. Okay. So, so we know it cannot be D because D says employers must enroll 100% of eligible employees. So that is describing a non-contributor. But this question asks for contributors. So C is the correct answer. Okay, so let's move on here. Um, uh, let's go here. And and just just keep in mind, I mean, most people will know this because if you work, you kind of know. But most of the time, part time employees are not covered uh, by you no, know, what is health insurance or life insurance, any kind of benefits. Most of the time, um, part time employees are not covered. And then when you have children. On your group life insurance, you know, you know your dependents, you no, know, you no, know, they're, they're they're eligible, uh, you no, know, to get um, you no, know, uh, for them to get coverage also. So, so most states will allow your dependents again. It varies state by state, but they can get sometimes it's up to two thousand dollars of coverage. So your dependents, you no, know, your spouse, your kids, sometimes they can get either two thousand or up to fifty percent of what you got. So. If your if your employer is covering you for maybe hundred thousand dollars life insurance, 
on your job, then your your kids, your spouse can get up to uh, 50,000, right? Um, um, coverage. But again, it depends on state law. Some states will say 50%, some states will say $2,000. Like um, Texas, uh, I think it's 2,000 hours. So it just depends. All right, let's come here to question number two. Which of the following statements about non-contributory group life insurance um, is not true? So what's the correct answer? So which one is it's not natural. true? Yeah, it's not true. Um, A. A? E e employee pays none of the premium. So if it's the negative. Um... It says not true, right? So so that's a true statement for non-contributory um, group life. The employee pays none of the premium. Yes, that is true. But this question is asking us what is not true. So we're looking for the false statement. True. Oh my God, I hate these. I absolutely hate these. Um... <laughs> So it's not true with non-contributory. Mm -hmm. It's not contribute. You don't contribute 100%. Ugh. I hate these. These really mess me up. Mm -hmm. um, okay, they don't have to submit. We're looking for the four state. Right. So they don't have to submit. 100 participation of the eligible group members is required. That is true. Non contributory. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking B. Um, B as in board? Right. Yes. Um, um, B is false, right? Because it says uh, an employer. Um, an employer pays 75% of the premium. No, no. So, so that means the employer is paying a percentage of the premium, right? But we said that anytime the em employer and the employees split the cost, like the premium, is considered contributory, right? But this is asking which of the following statements about non-contributory group life insurance is not true. So we know that B is not, you no, know, B will be the answer because an employer pay 75% of the premium for non-contributory group life insurance, that's false. The employer pays 100% of the premium. So on your exam, they say 100% of the premium or all of the premium all means the same thing, but you know the, the employee um, has no skin in the game. The, employee, the employer pays 100% of the cost of the premium. These always get me. The ones with the gnaw and the faults and the, oh. <laughs> Yeah. So we're gonna we get know, yeah, so no C cannot be the answer because C says 100% um, um, participation of eligible group members is required. Yes, that's true. Um, D, the uh, participants do not have to submit evidence of insurability. So that is for all types of group life insurance. So once you're eligible, um, you know, most employers will uh, have um, you know, a waiting period. Um, you know, it's usually um 90 days so if you've been on a job you know after 90 days then you can get group life insurance and all of that so so you don't have to go and prove that you're insurable no as long as you're eligible you don't have to submit any evidence of insurability all right so let's come here to question number three so uh i, I know this this may be a little confusing so the easiest way to remember it because when you have two opposite things, you know, sometimes people get them mixed up. The easiest way to remember is just, just learn one and just know um, that that it, um, that the opposite you know, um, is true, right? So you can learn, let's say, everything about um, contributory. You know, okay, uh, you know, the um, employer, um, you know, um, 
uh, has to cover at least 75% um, of eligible employees, you know, and the employee pays a portion of the premium. You know, so you learn everything and then you don't have to go and learn about the other one, right? And you just take the exact opposite to be true for non contributory. So in that way, you don't confuse yourself. So just learn one and on, on the exam, uh, you know that, okay, if it's contributory, uh, the uh, employee pays. So I know that non-contributory has to be the opposite. So I don't have to worry about that, but if I, I'll study this one and anything for non-contributory will just be the opposite. Um, that's the easiest. All right, let's go to question number three. The employee has control over which of the following in a group life insurance plan. The choosing the beneficiary. Uh, no, that's not B. That's C. Oh, uh, no, 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 no. That's D. D. Yeah. Yeah, D, yeah, D, D as, okay, choosing the beneficiary, perfect. So the employee has control over choosing the beneficiary. But everything else, you know, who chooses the um, insurance company? It's the employer, right? Who has the master contract? The employer. Who uh, decides the mode of premium payment? Mode just means frequency, right? So on your exam, if you see mode of premium payment, just know it means frequency of premium payment. Now, while we're on that, what are the, um, four modes. Uh, what are the four um, modes of premium payments? Four modes of premium payments. Mm -hmm. This will be on your exam. Oh, it's a good one. Um, so it probably would be. I'm assuming annual. Perfect. Okay. Annual is one. Um, I'm assuming a. Oh God, what is it called? When you actually show up at the place where you're getting um shoot another month oh a monthly yeah monthly you got okay. two more monthly um again more of premium payment I want to say buy not biannually but like every six months perfect yeah no what is that yeah. called well but well, that's that's by annual yeah. oh it is okay so yeah. biannual and then and then, and then last one is quarterly. So, okay. you, so you can pay every month, right? Again, mode of premium payments just talk is about frequency. So how frequently can you pay your premiums, right? You can pay either every month, you can pay every three months, which is every quarter. You can pay every six months, which is uh, on your exam, they may say semi-annual or they may say bi-annual. Hmm. All these the same thing, or you can pay annually. Okay. Now for that, would it be like, let's say the premium is a thousand dollars. Is it going to be the thousand dollars annually, or is it going to be, you know, somehow they'll say, well, you know, to save you money, you know, if you pay the, the annually, it'll save you more money if you do annual. Yeah. So, so usually what they do is whatever your monthly payment is, you just multiply that by, if you pay every three months, it'll be oh, okay. three, if you pay every year, about 12, yeah. Okay. So they don't save you money if you decide to go one way or the other. Perfect. You raise a very good um, um, point and we'll cover that. Well, we cover that in our self-study course in chapter, um, chapter two. Um, so I'll just touch on that. Uh, because you asked that question. So, so anytime you're paying, um, well, just know that there's an opposite relationship, right? Like a seesaw. You no, know, uh, you no, know, when we're kids, uh, well, I'm not sure if you if you if you roll seesaw, you know, you no, know, but when we're kids, you no, know, we have to ask uh, you know, we used to ride seesaw, right? So so your friend sits on the opposite end, when your friend goes down, you come up, right? You go up, your friend comes down. Something like that. So it has the seesaw uh, relationship. So what that means is uh, when you decrease the frequency of um, premium payment, that means let's say instead of paying every month, you pay every year, once a year, right? So we decrease the frequency. Again, mode of premium payment just means how frequently you pay your premium. So when you decrease the frequency, right? When you when you um, when you decrease the frequency, 
no, I'm, I'm sorry, it's not opposite, um, it's the same, not, um, scratch that. When you decrease the premium payment, then you're gonna decrease the total amount of, um, of, 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 of premium, right? So let's say if you're supposed to pay, um, let's say your monthly premium is $100, right? And so 100 times 12 is 1200, right? So if you pay monthly, you're gonna pay $1,200 every year, right? But now you say, you know what? I wanna pay every year, right? Once a year. So now instead of paying 1200 total every year, every year if you pay annual, you say, okay, your annual premium, instead of being 1200, your annual premium will probably be 1100 or, 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 or $1,050, right? So what I do, because um, for those of you who don't know, I'm also a life insurance agent. Um, when I'm not teaching, uh, I'm, I'm helping clients. So what I recommend to clients, if you can afford it, if you got money, you can afford pay annual premium, pay annual premium because you're going to save money. You no, know? uh, the other way to think about it, when you when you making installment payments, you always end up paying more than someone who's just uh, buying it up from, right? So if you if you say, oh, you know, I'm going to um, pay for this item, let's say I got a TV and I'm going to pay a little installment on it you know, every month for 12 months, you're going to end up paying more than someone who just buys that TV up front. So just know that, you know, know that the frequency, you know, know, know the more, uh, you know, frequently or, or the or the higher the number of installment payments, you know, the, um, the more money you're going to end up paying total. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, so so scratch that seesaw relationship. Right, right, right. I didn't hear that. Yeah, so they go. <laughs> well, all right. So 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 all of that uh, goes hand in hand. So we said D was the correct answer. That's correct. All right. Number four, when is a premium tax deductible? Again, we'll get into this more when we talk about um taxation of life insurance. But totally uh, gonna guess on this one. Let's see if I guess right. So yes. yeah, when is a premium tax deductible? Oh, wait, I might know this premium is for mm -hmm. D. D? Yes. Uh, premiums paid by an employer on a 50,000 group term life insurance plan for employees. Correct answer is D. Yes, yeah, so um, that was good. So just remember, anytime the employer, right, is paying premiums, right, it's always tax deductible. Why? Because it's a business expense, right? But um, individuals cannot deduct your premium. Um, no, no, they, they, they cannot deduct their, you know, their premiums for life insurance, right? Now, I know some people may be like, what up? You know, but why is the business going to deduct that on your taxes? But me, uh, as the individual, uh, no, I'm not, no, I'm not allowed to deduct it. That's not fair. Well, when you look at it, you know, the reason they do that is because the death benefit is tax-free, right? So, yeah, you're not going to um, get any tax break. You're not going to get a write off your premium payments. But when your beneficiary gets that death benefit, it's tax-free. I would rather get 500000 of one million tax-free, you know, than try to get a tax write off for 50 or $100 a month premium payment. And... Again, we'll get into the taxes a little bit more um, later on. But while we're on this, when it comes to taxes, people get very confused. And, and that's one of the uh, confusing uh, part of the exam. So, so the best way to help you remember any question that has to do with taxes, right? Uh, you, can, you can just, let me, let me annotate here. Uh, so for those of you on the podcast, I'm sorry, you're not going to see this. That's why you should, uh, this is why you should sign up for the live webinar so you get to see all of this. So you are missing out. Uh, check the link in the description and you're going to, uh, you can see that to register for the webinar. Okay. So, so, so yeah, you can see here, right here. So anytime you, um, oh, okay. 
All right, so I got your message. All right, so so for taxes, you're going to see here that um, the, Uncle Sam, all right, I just remember that Uncle Sam always has to get his cut. You know, you can either pay taxes before or you can pay taxes after. So here, you just write here on, on your exam. You see any question that has to do with, with taxes, just uh, you know, just write uh, you know, before, geez, I don't know what's going on with my mouse here, and after. All right. Uh, yeah, so so before and after. So, all right, that's that's rich. <laughs> so, so yeah, now uh, you ask yourself, uh, you know, is, is, is taxes, if the death benefit is not taxed, then that means, you know, uh, uh, the premium uh, uh, it's not going to be tax deductible, right? Wait, wait, wait. One more time, say that again. If the death benefit is not taxed, then the premium cannot be tax deductible, right? And now death benefit is not, not tax deductible. If the death benefit is not taxed, mm -hmm. then the death benefit is not tax deductible. Okay, no, so again, uh, yeah, we'll come here. So so did you pay tax on, on those premiums you pay? Did you pay taxes on those premiums? No. Uh, do you? Mm -hmm. you do? No, oh. uh, no uh, the, the premiums for um for life insurance are not tax um, deductible. So you don't get a claim down your taxes. Right. Yeah. So uh so so those premiums are not um tax deductible, right? So they're not tax deductible. You don't get to pay. Um, in, uh, uh, you don't get to deduct that on your taxes, right? right? So, because you're not getting that deduction on your taxes, that's why you get the tax, uh, the death benefit tax rate. If 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 you are getting that um, deducted on your taxes, then the death benefit will not be taxed. Because remember, Uncle Sam has to get taxes. You no. Know, and you know, and I know you you gotta go. I think we just got one more question after this, then we're gonna end it here. But well, I'm I'm, I'm gonna stop you and see what your confusion is. Uh, because I see your look on your face like you don't yeah, know. very, very confused on this one. Okay, so I'm trying to think mm -hmm. if you said the death benefit is not taxed, then you will be taxed one more time. Okay. So because the dev okay well the easiest way to think about it is just know that you can never be taxed twice right okay. Uh, okay. The, the same way you know, the government cannot um no they, no they cannot no they cannot um try you uh twice for the same crime right uh so 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 because um, because the the death benefit will not be taxed, right? We know that for your exam, know that all types of life insurance, it doesn't matter whether it's group life insurance, modified endowment contract, whatever, is the death benefit is never taxed. Okay. Because the death benefit is never taxed. That is why the premiums are not tax deductible. Okay, so so premiums on individual life insurance or whether it's group life insurance, but premiums that you as the insurer, you know, the you know, the insurer or the policy owner pay are not tax deductible. But for the business, if the business is paying it, it's tax deductible. But if right. you are okay. I think that's why I was getting it confused. Got it. Uh -huh. Okay, that makes more sense now. All right. Okay. So, all right, let's let's move on because I got your text and you say you have to run. So let's 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 uh, get here. Okay. So uh, I think this is the last question number five. Usually, group life insurance policies are written as what's the correct answer? And we talked about this yesterday. I want to say D. Group um usually group life insurance are written as group whole life. Nope. No. No. Mm -mm. 
Okay, so that's good. that. So now you're left with A, B, and C. You have a 33% chance of getting the right answer. <laughs> Usually group life insurance policies are written as increasing. No, so A. Perfect. So just know that group life insurance policies are always written as annually renewable term. Annually renewable term insurance, right? Uh, so uh, that's it. Uh, oh, I think, this, I think this is the last one. Who is qualified to receive a certificate of coverage under a trustee group life policy? Who is qualified to receive a certificate of coverage under a trustee group life policy? What's the answer? D, employee. Perfect. Good, good job. Because you see, Anytime you see certificate of coverage, the employee always get the certificate of coverage, right? But the, the, the plan sponsor, right? And the plan sponsor is pretty much you know, the, the company or the organization that's um, you know that's getting the insurance. They get a master contract or they get a master policy. So labor union is is a is a type of um, um, you know uh, it's a it's a type of uh, group. So the, the 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 plan sponsor will be the labor union um, uh, employer. So it cannot be the employer. It cannot be a. There's nothing called board of uh, trustees. So we know correct answer is D. All right. So yeah, if you want to take a screenshot of this, um, because of time, I'm not going to go into uh, all of these because I know you got to run. But you can take a screenshot of uh, of these. So you know that um, these are the different types of organizations that can get group coverage. So we say multiple employee group, labor unions, single employee group, trade unions, credit debit um, groups, fraternal organizations, trustee groups. So you can just, just take a picture of that and then uh, we can move on. All right. Uh oh, uh, let's see how many questions we got. Okay. Just one more. Well, I think this was seven. All right. So what's the correct answer for this one? What is one prerequisite for a corporation or organization to obtain coverage under a group life insurance policy? What's the correct answer? Corporate um, group must directors and must have at least one employee for sworn members other than acquiring your insurance. D also. Perfect. Good, 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 good. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I think you got... You know, almost uh, 90 something, you know, you only got one wrong. Good job. So group was formed for a purpose other than acquiring insurance. That is true. Um, you must get your, um, you know, that group must get the um, insurance, not, you know, well, it must be formed for a reason other than just getting insurance, right? So know that D is the correct answer. Look at that. All right. Uh, good, good job. So we're going to pick it up next time. Then we're going to talk about retirement plans, um, the different types of retirement plans, 401k, rough IRAs, rovers, all of those things. So uh, before we part ways, any questions? Questions? Nope. Any questions? Okay. Nope. No questions, comments, or concerns. Very all excited. Right. <laughs> all right. So thank you very much for your time, um, Rebecca. And we're going to see you uh, next time here. And for you guys who are listening, thank you for uh, listen, and we're going to see you in our next episode. Thank you.